What up peeps, it's Phil Phil back again with another video and in this one I'm going to be talking about the MPC 500 and kind of going through how I'd make my beats and going through some of the features on the step edits and the sequence edit menus. Now I'm not going to explore everything because um, while filming this video, I realized that there's a lot of advanced features that I have yet to completely understand, and I don't want to put any uh, misinformation out there. So this is more of like, uh, come along with me, watch me make a beat, and hopefully you can learn some things along the way. Um, I hope that's okay for you guys, and if you enjoy these type of videos, please let me know down in the comments. And if I'm doing something that is kind of tedious in the way that I'm working and you have a better method of doing it, uh, please let me know down in the comments. It will not only help me, but it will help the other viewers of this video as well. So with that being said, let's uh, get into it. All right, peeps, uh, let's get into it. We're just going to go to the sample mode. I'm just going to... Raise this a little bit. Go to stereo to mono. And we'll turn on the auto normalization because if you don't turn on this feature, you have to go to every single sample and make sure it's loud enough uh, in the trim feature. So I'm just going to arm the recording and I'm going to record a hi hat. Okay, sample one. You can preview it by pressing play. Uh, now I just want to, I just want to name this, uh, I don't know, something stupid or cute, puppy. Okay, so this is our puppy sample. Uh, it's going to be puppy and I'm going to assign that to this pad right over here. Uh, let's go, let's take another hi-hat. Let's do that again. And I'm just going to put it right here. Uh, okay, let's go to our kicks. And let's arm this. Ooh. I like that. Okay, now let's take another kick. Arm that. Ooh, frig. Okay, wait, let's do it again. Mm. Let's take our shakers. Let's put that in. Hmm. Okay. And let's do a long shake right now. Hmm. Okay. Uh, snares. Let's get some crunchy snares in here. <coughs> Boom. Uh, another snare. Hmm. <coughs> like it. Uh, percussions. Hmm. Maybe like a tab, yeah. Why not? And thumbs. I don't know what this is. Hmm. That's cool. Uh, okay. So far. Okay, now let's just put like two more. Uh, two more kicks or put one clap actually one clap mm. I like that and a, another cake mm. arm it boom okay so now we're gonna go to mode program and go through all the samples 
and you can use the jog wheel right over here but I'll just use my numeric so I'll go 85 uh, 90 actually I'll go 90 here or 91 the hi-hats I like to keep like a little bit low Like not so high because you'll end up turning it down in the mix afterwards. But what's nice is that you can pan them. And you don't have to copy what I'm doing. I'm just <laughs> I'm just kind of going uh, about it however I really want to. So I'm just going to go 90, uh, about, okay, 9, zero, nine zero. uh, because you kind of want the drums to hit hard, I mean, you can layer them, that's sick, that's like a really cool feature that some people don't know, is that you can layer your drum hits, um, and I might do that a little bit later, but, I guess right now. Oh, me, me voyons. Okay. Uh, now we'll go to mode program and for this one, I'll just do AD. Okay. Okay. So now we're just gonna build a sequence. Um, Oh, frick. Okay. So, yeah, now I need a now I need a sample. Okay, let me let me look if I have any nice loops or something. Just to I'll put it down to 90. And yeah, let's see. Okay. Mm, and I'm just going to put it on pad B7. Okay. And we'll take another one. Uh, let's make a sequence. Mm. Okay, let's go to track A7. I like to put my samples on there. So you hear that sample right over there. It's a two. It's a two-bar uh, sequence right now. So if we go into params and sequence length, you see it's two bars. Now let's say if you want to copy those two bars into the next two bars to just kind of like double it, right? Um, this was confusing to me, and it might be confusing to you, but. You have to go to mode sequence edit and then afterwards you have you have all these things at the beginning but you have to just keep going down until you reach copy bars from sequence 1 to sequence 1 and so first corresponds this is the first bar you're copying the last bar 
will be the second bar that you're copying. And then afterwards and after, this is, you start, it's, you're telling basically the MPC to start copying after the first bar. But you don't want to stop copying. Like, let's say if you're just copying the first two bars, you don't want to start copying after the first bar. You just want to start copying right at the first bar. So you put it to zero. Uh, you make one copy. If you want to do six bars or eight bars or something, you can do two copies um, or three. And just press do it. Okay, now when we play our sequence, it's going to sound the same, but it's going to be four bars. Okay, now let's uh, make a freaking drum sequence. So let's just uh, let's just go to uh, track A1. Now I kind of took this method a little bit from uh, from the MPC head uh, this video. Uh, what's this? So I don't know. I think it was kind of how to add swing to your drums and everything. Um, so basically, I'll go on the timing correct. This is one a set to one eighth uh, at fifty percent, and fifty percent swing is no swing at all. Um, that's the least amount of swing you can put when you're on the timing correct mode. Uh, but in this case, we're on uh, we're on track one, and on track one, I usually put down my my snares. Okay, so let's uh, let's sequence. Let's just record this in, right? I'll put it on full level. Okay, so so yeah, I have the first two bars in now. We can do two methods to, I only recorded for the two, first two bars, so we can do two methods to copy what's in the first two bars um, onto the next two bars for bars three and four, or we can go into the step edit mode and we could just see how it's, how the, um, how it's recorded onto the second measure of the first bar and the fourth and then the second measure of the second bar and the fourth. Now, we could just go here, press overdub, right? And I already have it set to full level. I can just go like this. Boom. 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 And then click stop, and then exit. Pretty good. Or if you didn't want to do that method, I don't know if I can do an un if I undo. Let's see if okay. Let's see. No, it doesn't really do anything. Oh, okay. So it just it undid the last one. Uh. All right. So you know what we can do. Um. It'll just copy over, it'll just overwrite it anyway. So, you know, copy events from sequence one, track A1, to sequence one, track A2, and then afterwards, uh, you could do pads all, because I only recorded one thing, but let's say if you have multiple things recorded on one track, you could just press the, tr the pads A2, and in the events of to three, I like to go back to, to 495 and you could start a copy on 3 and then you go replace um, and do it so let's hear it Okay, 
so right now we'll just uh, kind of put in our hi-hats what I like to do is go on velocity and okay and when you go to the timing correct um, you can go on 15 and you can bring the swing up to around 60 or 59 uh, oh 59 why not and let's go to track A3 to record these in alright so let's do it uh, let's actually do it yeah there you go Okay, so I like the hi-hats, but I kind of want to shift them even more uh, to the right. So we can go to mode sequence, and then afterwards go shift timing, A3, uh, let's just go to the end, uh, we'll go later, shift them by three, let's press do it. a little bit more groove in there um, okay now let's just do the kicks right so let me go to tr to time and correct we'll bring it down to like 55 um, yeah and we'll go full level on that and do that on track two so so yeah let's go um uh what you can also do in this case if you want the kicks to cut each other off uh you could just go to program and when you go to sample and you go to voice overlap you set that to mono all right so yeah let's let's do this Okay, so I don't know if that was whack or not, but let's uh, let's just fix it up. So what I like to do is you just go to the step edit feature, and now um, as a rule of thumb, it's good to to have your kicks hitting hard on the one and three. So. There's your volume right over here, and you can just type in 127 right over here to fix it. Um, and I don't want it to hit on the two like this, right? So I could just go down to move and maybe like, like just move it to like 39. Why not? Okay. Uh, now let me go back to step and someone told me in the comments that if you press shift and then side I'll go to all the events that you have instead of endlessly scrolling through which is such <laughs> which will help your workflow so much and I was just so stupid for not doing it before um, okay there's nothing on Okay, let's see. Okay, so there's one on one one, and then you have this on one twenty six, and you have you have on one three as well, and you have on a four. Um, 
got this on one, you got that on 239, and then you got this. Maybe I'll just maybe I'll just shift it. I don't know. Let's let's see how this here. I think we gotta fix up this the, um, the third the third bar so let me just okay you got this and you got that and you got it on four you got it on the fourth so you're triggering this at the same time you're tr you're basically triggering um, the the snare and maybe sometimes it's it's not so tight so let me just do it to 422. And let's hear how this goes. I think it's missing. It's missing something on the on the three. Let's go back. Let's just uh go uh, okay let's uh, not move let's go to step and put it on the one okay, on the three actually um, and we'll go like this before like overdub um, yeah, there you go. Boom. Duh. Okay, let's just see. Sorry that the... F this will take, this is taking so long, but I just want to get the groove right. 126, 48. Okay, I'll go 126. And over here we'll put a... Uh, Almost like a ghost kick. And we'll go back to this one and we're going to move this. We're going to move this step. Move it a little bit further down maybe 48 yeah okay yeah so so there you go. Basically, so far, let me just. Uh, this is this is what the sequence we have right now. But let me just um, explore. Okay, let's say if I want to make the uh, the hi hats just a tad bit louder, but I don't want to increase the velocity on like every step, as you saw I just do on the step edit feature. Uh, you can go to track A3 and then afterwards go to mode sequence edit and then you go to edit velocity and so you edit it for all the pads or just your hi-hats um, and you can do add value you see add value or sub value there's multi uh, value percentage set to value to velocity 
sorry. Um, but in this case, I'll just go add value. Um, and this is like manually, so like let's say if you have the value at like 70, I'm just going to add 11, so it'll be like, I don't know. Um, yeah, it'll be like 81 or something. Let's just do it. Okay, cool. Um, what else should, what else can we do? Let me just copy this uh, sequence to sequence two, and then afterwards track mute A7. Okay, we'll put in another sample. So track A, put that in. Okay, so now for the second hit, you don't want it to have the same duration as the first one. Uh, also, Let's just check if we have this on mono or poly. Uh, it's on poly, but um, usually, okay, so if it, if the sample is longer, but it's pretty much two bars long, but if the sample is longer, let's say, you would have uh, your sample overlap the next time it's actually triggered. Um, and so putting it on mono is, is so that it doesn't, so it ends right when the next uh, hit happens. Um, so yeah, like that. Hey peeps, I actually found out something rather interesting. So basically if you go to your time and correct mode, um, let's say I want to put it to 1 8 and uh, 50. And I'm just gonna put in the uh, the snares uh, manually. So if I go to mode step edit, and I go all the way down to incremental auto, so auto will automatically once you press the pad, go will look at your timing correct and go to the next time where the where the uh, where the note should be played. So since I put it to 1 8 and 50%, it's not going to be swing at all, and I'm just going to put in my uh, snares automatically. So if I go full level, record, and now it's going to go to uh, 1 48th, but you can, you can go back so you see it's it says forty eight um steps, so you can go to forty eight step I guess this is more um suited if you're if you're putting in hi hats like i think I think that's better actually you know what let's 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 do that let's put in hi hats instead uh okay, let's just delete this person okay. So, let me go to track A3, not make things complicated for myself, down the line, um, timing correct, um, let me just put that to 60, 1 eighth, uh, hopefully this will uh, make a difference, but uh, we'll, we'll see. Okay, so now... Record is on.
Okay. Put that to off. Boom. So, this is basically the step sequencer on uh, the MPC 500. Uh, so, when you record with an external MIDI keyboard, you can not only record the note events, but also MIDI events such as continuous MIDI controller, channel pressure, and other data. So, yeah, so let's say if you cook this up to a keyboard and you want the velocity to correspond to how hard you press on the keys, uh, it can pick that up, you know. Uh, let's see if we can actually do that. So now I have my uh, Yamaha CS2X plugged up and ready to go. Um, so let's just see what notes correspond. Uh, well, let's just go into the MIDI sync menu actually. Uh, so we can go MIDI sync and receive channel all, pad to sampler on. I think you go. Yeah, pad to sampler on, soft through as track, um, and the sync is master, yeah, so I don't want this to be synced, but basically uh, to control different parameters, let's see, so C1. Hold on. Hey, so I got it working. Um, yeah, let's just turn it over to the Yamaha CS2X. See if I'll trigger this. So, let me go back to the step edit feature. Um, and yeah, we could just record this in automatically. We'll just go track A1. Uh, yeah, we'll put it in the snares. Yeah, see that? Okay, so we'll go to go all the way back. Um, starting on two, let me just go to the timing correct. Put that swing down. Uh, okay, so 48, right? Because it will automatically go to 48, but if you don't want that, just put it down. It's actually slower this way because it'll only go by 48, so you know what? Let me just turn this thing off. I go incremental manual. Because um, what's much faster in this case is just to move the. Uh, yeah, it's just to move basically this one. All right, so let's go. Boom. Boom. Okay. And not all of them are set to uh, uh, 127. We can change that. We can just go into mode, uh, edit velocity. Um, we'll go to the end. Set an add value set to to value. One twenty-seven. 
Let's see if this works. Okay, now let's go into here and let's see. Oh, 127, 127, 127, 127. Whoa, whoa, dude. Dude, we, we're on something. Okay, so now. Hey, let's swing some kicks a little bit. Um, let's go on to track. Two, A2. All right, this is what we're gonna do. Um, 10 is 12 levels off. Hmm. See, we're gonna go to mode back to step edit and let's see if we can do something that's, um, has a little bit of bounce to it just by recording it into the steps, right? So, Okay, let's go to timing correct. 16, uh, I'll swing it a bit. Uh, okay, so now it's gonna jump by 24. Mm. First one is to be hit really hard. So, boom. Change that to A1. Mm. 127. 24. Is that auto? Increase that to auto. Yeah. Okay, this is probably gonna sound terrible, but like, let's check it out. Oh, <laughs> that's actually pretty cool. Okay, let me just like put it in. Um, let me just copy that. <laughs> Why not? Uh, I'm, I don't know what I'm, what I'm doing even. I just, okay, increments. Uh, yeah, I could just copy events this to five and then start it on three. It's not really gonna do anything, so. Uh, <laughs> oh, I just sent it to six, so freak this, okay. Boom, boom. Let me just do something super weird, you know what? Like, I don't even, I don't even care, bro. Let me just do it. Okay, so what we're gonna do is gonna record a new sample. We're gonna take this out and gonna put this, this coming out of the CS2X into here. Um, 
and I'm gonna go to performance and I'm gonna wait hold on I'm just gonna go to multi I mean utility Turn the arpeggiator down to 90. Okay, I'll go pad. Okay, so back to B10. That's what we're gonna do. Um, I'm gonna go to mode, sequence edit. Wait, no. We're gonna go to mode program, and then B10. We got that puppy sample. So. Turn that up. Uh, we can make it a one shot. Yeah, if we're making it a one shot, then it'd be good to put the voice overlap to mono in the end. And I want to just record that on a separate track. Why not? gonna put an EQ on that So that's basically it. Oof. Okay. I I think I just want to repeat a few things. Um I think this auto uh feature in the uh in the step edit mode. I think it's really good if you were to record um like hi hats or stuff in. Um like if you were if you wanted to just record like the snares then I just suggest you put it on manual and put your cursor up right over here and then afterwards just kind of scroll through every single time if you want to play if you want me to uh, show you how to connect uh, like a MIDI keyboard or like a synth like this to the MPC uh, I can do a video like that. There's actually a really good video um, by Thursday Night Machines or Tuesday Night Machines. Yeah, um, I forget his name, but he's a really nice guy and has a really a good video on connecting, um, let's say, a MIDI controller to your MPC, and then you can basically have that information from your MIDI controller pass through your MPC um, and uh, basically control a synthesizer of yours. So yeah, you can do that too. Um, 
I might do that with the Volk FM or I might do something like an experiment with the MS-1 uh, but yeah yeah we'll see we'll, we'll really see um, and yeah I think that's it for now so I hope this video helped you in some type of way um, I know it was just like a little bit all over the place but also at the same time um, I think I covered some important things and I've learned some things myself to be honest um, so if you like these type of videos please let me know down in the comments and I just hope that you're spending the time learning some stuff with your MPC or synth or whatever it is um, and yeah, with that being said, hope you all have a nice day. Peace.